Good morning, beautiful subscribers. It's March 3rd here, southeastern Pennsylvania, zone 7A, and we're filling the golf cart up with gas because we're heading about a mile through the woods to my buddy Jason's house. He's got a magical Chinese fig tree that we're stealing cuttings off of. All right, guess what, guys? There's no wind today, finally. It's gonna be a beautiful day today. Calling the fig tree magical because Jason's family is from China and they brought it back with them and they don't know the name of it. But it has very cool characteristics and that's why I'm so excited to steal cuttings off of it today. And when we get back home from Jason's house, I'm gonna show you guys how to propagate fig cuttings. What makes this fig so exciting is he never protects it. It has very minimal dieback in the winter time. It produces figs every single year and it has these weird shaped leaves that I have never seen before. We made it to Jason's house. You can see on this new section of his home, there's some Chinese writing on the wall. I'm pretty sure it's his name, his family name, and some sort of positive quote. It's even cooler than I remember. Look at the size of this thing. And like I said, it wasn't dying back at all, which is really strange for zone 7A. I mean, can you imagine how many figs are gonna be on this thing? All right. Well, let's focus. We're here to take cuttings so we can propagate them. And we want to look for wood that's been lignified, which in layman's terms means that the young green growth has gone through the process of hardening off. So you're looking for older, harder wood, not anything that's young and green. Or in this case, like, that's a younger branch. We want to look for something darker and harder. All right, you see the difference? This is a younger, smaller branch, still has some green in it. We do not want to use that branch for our fig cuttings. Instead, we want to use one that is darker and older, like that one right there. All right, and then we want to look for sections eight to 10 inches long that have as many nodes as possible. Nodes are where the roots are gonna grow from and it's gonna push new growth from. So you have a node here, 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 here. So this is a pretty good section because it has a lot of nodes on it. We're gonna to wanna to put two nodes in the pot below the dirt and at least two nodes above the dirt so we can have root growth and push new growth. Zoom in here and show you guys what a node looks like. You see those right there? Those are nodes. That's where the roots are gonna grow from and that's where the new growth leaves are gonna grow from. So we wanna find a branch that has as many nodes as possible in that 10 inch range. Now that we found the branches that we wanna cut off, we have to use the right tool. We do not wanna use hand pruners for this because when you make a cut on a large diameter branch, it will 
pinch the edges and damage the bottom of the cutting. So we're looking for branches that are half inch to three quarter inch wide diameter. It's about a big magic marker. So if we were to cut that with hand pruners, you're gonna press it in and make a really bad cut. So instead, we wanna use a fine tooth saw to make the cleanest cut we can. Here's an example of a fine tooth saw. Do you see how fine that is? Unlike this one, that's not fine tooth, this is for making giant cuts on huge diameter pieces. All right, let's take some cuttings. I'm gonna cut these down smaller back at my house to the right size, but for now I'm just gonna make clean cuts for Jason. Like this, we can probably get one, two, maybe three cuttings out of this. Look how nice that cut is. That's what we want. See how clean and crisp that is? If you tried to do that with hand pruners, it would never be that nice. And we damage the wood and get a bad start to our propagation. Hopefully later this year, when we get some of these to survive, you fig experts online can help me identify it because it has these very unique weird lobed leaves that are not normal for a fig tree. All right, we got the cuttings. Let's get out of here and head home. I'll show you the rest of the process when we get home. We're about halfway done. All right, when we get home, we gotta prep the soil. We gotta soak these cuttings. And then we gotta sterilize them. And then we gotta find a really good spot in our house to put them. And we're gonna go over all that as soon as we get back to the farm. Okay, we're home. Set up a little workstation here. You guys are obviously not gonna steal your figs from your friend Jason's house, but you can order fig cuttings online, any type of variety that you want from anywhere in the world. They ship very easily and they propagate extremely well. So here's an Italian 258 fig. I got this cutting from Albania, I think halfway across the world and I was able to propagate a cutting in the mail all the way from Albania. So go online, find some really cool fig trees and get some to ship you cuttings. And this is where you'll start once you get them in the mail. The bottom of the cutting you want to cut on an angle really close to one of these nodes. And the top, you wanna to cut flat. So here you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six nodes. And maybe we'll put three of them below the ground and three of them above the ground. When the cuttings show up at your house in the mail, the first thing you wanna do is soak them in water and 10% hydrogen peroxide or bleach. And this is to sterilize them 
and kill any fungus or bacteria that is on the branches. We're going to leave them in here for five to ten minutes. And then we're going to take them out and let them dry a little bit before we put them in our soil. And that brings us to the next step, which is very important. We need to go make our growing medium. We do not want to put these directly in potting soil. So I'm going to show you the next step. Alright, so I'm by no means a fig expert. There's a lot more detailed fig propagation videos online. So if you're interested in actually doing this, then check out some other videos. There's so many different ways that you can do this and so many different techniques. And the reason why is because it's easy. So now we're gonna mix our propagation growing medium together. And you want it to be able to hold moisture, but it also needs to drain. So I like to use 50% vermiculite, 25% real, real like fine mulch that's been biodegrading in a mulch bed for a long time. And then 25% gapotting mix. If anything, you want to use more vermiculite. You want the soil to be able to hold moisture but also drain well. So after we mix this all up, we're going to water it, get it moist first, and we want to kind of be able to pack it like a snowball and it hold together. Really, if you want to get crazy, you could sterilize this as well. When you go to mix the water, you could use uh, boiling water, and that will also cut down on if there's any fungus or bacteria in this mulch that I just got. So that's not a bad idea if you want to mix boiling hot water in here. So we want to get this nice and moist before we put the cuttings in, before we move this over into the pots. We want to have this mixed up and fully moist. And like I said before, we want to get it so you can kind of pack it like a snowball. You see that? And it stays. It's getting there pretty close. It's a good mixture. So we want to use uh, longer, skinnier pots. And this is so we can get more of those nodes underneath the soil as we can. So we have the soil snowball consistency. This is good. This is what we want. It's already pre-soaked. We're going to... We don't want to pack it. Just kind of, kind of get it in there. See how it, see how it went down. Put a little bit more in. We don't want to pack this. Like I said before, there's so many different ways to do this. Some people like to scratch the bottom and then put root hormone on. I didn't do that with this Italian 258. I've done it before. I'm not going to do it today. We could take these figs, find the side that you cut, 
on an angle. And we're going to press them down in the pot pretty deep. As many nodes as we can. To Just like that. We got a node and a node. Definitely want to get two in the dirt. This is why longer pots is helpful. And we got two above. Just like that. Okay, we're almost done. Now we got to find a nice spot to put them. I highly recommend that you put them in a heated room on a tray over a vent. i show you what that looks like. We want them to stay above 70 degrees but below 80. So the warmest room you can find and out of the sunlight. If you put it on the windowsill in the sunlight, the fig's going to want to grow leaves before the roots have got established. And that's not what we want. My office is the warmest room in the house. For some reason, when they built the home, they got extra vent ducts in here and it just gets the warmest. So you're going to want to find the warmest room in the house because we want to keep these soil above 70 degrees. So I got the pots on a regular baking sheet and you see the vent right there. I am going to slide the baking sheet over top of the vent. And we're going to try and keep them as warm as possible. If you're having trouble propagating your figs, it's probably because they're too cold. You can use a kitchen baking thermometer and press it down into the soil to see where you're at. You really want to be above 68 degrees and below 80 degrees. And then put the shades down on the windows and make sure there's no direct sunlight on them. Check this out. This is a germination blanket. I've never used it before. I just bought it on Amazon for $50. I plan on doing lots of propagation this year and even cloning of some of my fruit trees. So I figured I'd invest the $50. This mat gets hot, kind of like the vent. It has its own thermostat and it can keep your figs at the perfect temperature. I might take them off the tray. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have to monitor the temperature. It has a thermostat and it even has a little probe like I was suggesting you do with the kitchen thermometer. Right now it says it's 69.4 degrees in here. So we stick the probe in the dirt. Let's try this one. 56, 55 degrees. Now we just put cold water on these and the dirt was sitting outside. But we need to get this to 70 degrees, 72, 73 for these figs to actually start to root. That's why it's so important to put them over the vent. And then use a the kitchen th thermometer or whatever you have for baking. Yeah, we're at 53 degrees in the soil right now. That's not gonna work. So, I can feel the mat starting to heat up. It should hopefully heat this tray up and we'll heat the soil up. 52.7. No good. All right, guys, we're all finished. I look forward to showing you the new growth in a few weeks. Hopefully, some of these will be successful. I think they'll be all right. And then we'll plant them outside probably this fall. And if you have any questions, shoot it down there in the comments section. And like always, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.